Good afternoon everybody and welcome to our class once again. This afternoon we are looking at our topic is computation and under computation we are dealing with decimals. We want to look at addition, subtraction, some multiplication and division. Now before we get on to those operations, there are some other things that, that we want to deal with that we need to use. For example, we have our whole number 3. 3 can also be written as 3.0 or we have a hundred and a hundred can also be written as a hundred decimal zero or if we have 0 0.77 what you notice here is that the zero is in front of the decimal point now why did we put it in front of the decimal point and why didn't we leave it as 0.77? Because the zero helps us to remember that the decimal point is there. It highlights it or it places emphasis. You need to remember that this is there. Now 3.0 is an equivalent decimal for 3 and the same thing for 100. Now we will make use of this as we move on into our addition. Now we want to first of all find the sum of 22.3, 0 0.0071, 98.125 and 3. Now when we're going to set down our numbers to do our addition, we make sure that all of our decimal points fall on the each other. So our first, second, third. Now we make equivalent decimals. Now what we notice in 22.3 and it, it, it follows but it is followed by 0 0.0071 we have four digits at the back. So we try to make this one 4 too, so we add in zeros here, we make an equivalent fraction. The same thing we do with the second number, because remember, zero does not change the value. When we go to the number 98.125, we add a zero here, so we have 4, 4, 4 after the decimal point. And the last one, 3, we add zeros also to make up the equivalent fraction. So what we notice now is that all the places are covered. So we wouldn't miss any. So we line up our decimal point for our answer. And we begin our addition. So we have a naught added to a 1 and two zeros and we would have a 1. A 0 to a 7 is a 7. To a 5 would give me a? 12 added to 0 would give me 12. So I do my normal and I bring in my 2. 1 and 0 and 2 and 0 and 0, 3. 0 and 1 and 0 and 3, 4. Now I go to my whole numbers. 3 and 8. 11 and 0 11. and through 13. 13. 1 and 0 One. and 9 Seven. and 0 Seven. and 2 12. 12. And that's our last one we're adding so we bring across the entire thing. So when we find the sum of 22.3, 0 0.0071, 98.125, and 3, our sum is 123.4321. And you see how we have made use of our equivalent decimals, okay? And why we have put in our zeros to help us emphasize the decimal point and not to miss any place. Now that was the first one. I would like you to try this second one. But before you try it, I want us to estimate, get a rough estimate of what our answer should be. Now when we look at 103.2, 103.2 is approximately 100. 
57, if we should round it off, would be approximately 60. And 0 0.0014, that would round off to be about 0 0.002. No, 0 0.001. So we take these two into consideration. Now, if we approximate here and we find the sum, our answer will be roughly be about 160. And we keep that in mind. So let us say we go and we find our actual answer, and it's something that is very far away from what you estimated. You know that something went wrong. So quickly for me, set down your numbers. Make sure that the decimal points are lined under each other, directly under each other. Good, so let's set it down now. We have 103.257, so we're emphasizing our points, 0 0.0014. Now the first thing we're going to do is to make equivalent decimals. So we're going to fill in our zeros. One, two, three, one, one, two, and we're performing the operation of addition. Our answer, putting our point. Floyd, what was your answer? 160. Point uh, 160. Point Videli, was your answer the same? Yes, now let us see if we're going to get that here. So when a 4 is added to two zeros, we have a 4. When a 1 is added to two zeros, we have the 1, a 0, and a 2. Then we have 7 and 3, 10. 5 and 1 would be 6. And the 1 comes back. So we have 160.2014. And if we look at what we estimated originally, we would see it gave us a guide as to somewhere that our answer should be in the, in the vicinity of 160. Okay? Any questions? No, miss. No, miss. So we have add addition. We estimated and then we add it again. Now let us try some subtraction. We want to find the difference between 1,032 point nine zero one and two ninety seven point one zero six again we have to emphasize the skill of setting down our points the decimal points must be under each other we're performing the operation of subtraction can we take six from one no, no. so we go ahead all the way to this column and we take so the 9 becomes 8, 10 becomes 9, and we have there 11. If we take 6 from 11, what remains? 5. Damien, if we take nothing from 9, what would we have? And 1 from 8 would leave us with? Again, we can't take 7 out of 2. So we're going to take 1 from the 3, leave us with a 2. So when 7 is taken out of 12, we have a 5. 9, we can't take 9 out of 2. So we come all the way to the thousands column. No thousands would be left. 9, and here we have a 12. So when we take 9 tens from 12 tens, we're left with 3. 2 from 9 would leave us with so the difference between 1032.901 and 297.106 is 735.795. Now this was an illustration. Now this is your challenge. 
you're going to find the difference between 4,530.96 4, and 778.279. Remember the decimal point. <laughs> I guess we have an answer now. So I'll set it down first and then I'll ask Damien to volunteer his answer. Yes, Damien, what was your answer? 3,752. 3, 3, 3, 3, Decimal 6. Eight one. Fidelity, did you get the same answer? Yes, sir. What about you, Floyd? Yes, sir. Raymond? Yes, sir. Good. So, what did what is the first thing you did after you would have, would have set down and you would have laid your decimal points one under each other? What did you do, Raymond? You filled in the zeros. So we have one there, and we don't absolutely need this one that much, but this one is the most important. Good and we begin our taking because we can't take nine out of zero so we come across to the six and we take one leaving five we take nine out of ten leaves us with a one again we take seven out of fifteen would leave us with eight and two out of eight would leave us with a six good again we're faced with the eight and zero so we go ahead and take again, 8, if we take it out of 10, we're left with, we take again, 7 taken out of 12, we take again, 7 taken out of 4, 10, 7, and nothing from 3 would leave us with 3. So the difference between 4530.96 and 778.279 is 3752.681. So there we have learned how to add and subtract decimal numbers and we have also learned how to make use of equivalent decimals. And you, if you've noticed, zero plays a very important role. Now we want to look a little now at multiplication and division by 10 and powers of 10. Now even though you look and you see a 1 here, remember 10 to the 0 power is equal to 1 as you would have done in a previous lesson. Now I want you to observe a pattern. You look at what is here and you tell me what you have noticed. Something is going on. What is the something? Now across here I have 1 is multiplied by 1.4 and the outcome is 1.4. Then we have 10 being multiplied by 1.4 again, but this time we got 14. Then we took 100 multiplied by 1.4 and out came 140. Then we took 1000, repeated it with 1.4 and this time we got 1400. We're multiplying on the other side again, but this time we don't have a, a mixed number, we have just decimal. So we have 1 multiplied by 0 0.0007 and out comes 0 0.007. 10 multiplied by 0 0.007, what did we get Raymond? 0 0.007. Then we took 100 by the same 0 0.0007 and what did we get Floyd? 0 0.07 and when we took a thousand and we multiplied by 0 0.0007 Damien what did we get? 0 0.7 now I want you to look at what is going on there 
and I'd like somebody to tell me what they think happened. And remember, we're multiplying, first of all here, by powers of 10. What do you observe? What happened? Yes, Raymond. Yes, as you multiply the decimal point shifts to the right. As you multiply the decimal point, this decimal point shifts to the right. That's Raymond's observation. Anybody else would like to volunteer their observation? Damien, you want to try? It shifted to the right. Uh huh. And that's it. For every zero in the And we add zero. That indicates when it's multiplied by a hundred and a thousand. Yes, it is shifted to the right. But then we must also find that there is also one obs observation we must make. When we're multiplying by the one, we got back the same number. When, there, when we started to have zeros in our multiplicand, what we notice is that the decimal point moved one place. When there are two zeros, the decimal point moved. And when we have three zeros, the decimal point moved one, two, three places. So it would now be here and here and here. So if we had 10 zeros, a 1 and 10 zeros, how many places would the decimal point be moved? Really? 10 places. 10 places. And it's moving 10 places to the right. And if you observe here, the same thing is happening, the same pattern. With 1, it's the original number. 10, we move one place. So now we have two zeros in our product. Two zeros, we move one, two places, so we have one zero after the point. And when it's a thousand, we move one, two, three places, so our product is 0.7 or 0 0.7. So we're moving to the right. And the number of places we move our decimal point to the right is determined by the 10 or the power of the 10. Now observe what is going on with the division. That was for multiplication. Yes, Floyd. Would you like to tell me your observation? In this case, with the division, we move to the left. In, we move to the left. Any other thing you want to emphasize? When we divide it two by one, we get back the same answer, two. Yeah. And in terms of the zeros, as we keep going down with zeros, the zero is the adding on to after the decimal point. So as the zeros increase in the divisor, what we notice is the same number of places the decimal point was moved. So if we have, and in this case, are we moving to the left or to the right? Yeah. We're moving to the left. So in the case of 2, the decimal point is here. So we got our same 2 back again. In 2, and we're dividing by 10, our decimal point is moved one place to the left. So we have here. And instead of leaving it as point 2, we put in the 0 to remind us that our point is there. Then we go to 100, two zeros, so our decimal point is moved two places. 1, 2. Then 1,000, 1, 2, 3. And the same pattern goes on over here. So if we should summarize what is happening here as we multiply and divide by powers of 10, in multiplication, when you multiply by powers of 10, the decimal point is shifted to the right. And how many places is shifted to the right is determined by whether you're multiplying by 1, 10, 100, 1,000, and so on. 
When we're dividing, the decimal point is shifted to the left, and that is determined by whether you're multiplying by one, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a million. The number of zeros will determine the number of places moved. Here again, we want to divide 6.53 by 100. And if we divide, our quotient would be 0 0.0653. Now we want to find an alternative way of finding the quotient. So, we're going to rewrite 6.53 as 653 over 100, and then we divide by 100, and 100 is the same as 100 over 1. Now, we know that when we have fractions and we're dividing, we change the division sign to multiplication and what do we do with the number at the back we upturn so we have one over a hundred so we can multiply when 653 is multiplied by one what do we get 653 when we have multiply a hundred by a hundred what do we have ten thousand So what we have there is 653, the point is here, and we're dividing by 10,000. How many zeros are in 10,000? Four. And those four zeros will indicate to me that I have to move four places to the left or to the right, Videli? To the left. So we move one, two, three, four. Our new point would be here, and we have to fill in the zero since no digit is there to fill the place. So our answer would be 0 0.0653. Is that what we got initially? Yes. yes. So in addition to just looking at a number like this, we can express it in other ways and still arrive at the same answer. Okay? Now let us recap what we did today. Look, look on, come on, look carefully, look carefully. <laughs>
It is useful to estimate your answer to see if your answer makes sense. 55.68 plus 53.42 equals 109.1. 60 plus 50 equals 110. Look at the patterns we get when we multiply by powers of 10. Pattern A. 1 by 3.5 equals 3.5. 10 by 3.5 equals 35. 100 by 3.5 equals 350. 1000 by 3.5 equals 3500. Pattern B. 1 0 0.004 0 0.004. 10 multiplied by 0 0.004 equals 0 0.04. 100 multiplied by 0 0.004 equals 0 0.4. 1000 multiplied by 0 0.004 equals 4. Example 3. Calculate 9.15 divided by 100. Solution. 9.51 divided by 100 equals 0 0.0951. 951 over 100 multiply by 1 over 100 equals 951 over 10,000 equals 0 0.095. Look at the pattern we get when we divide by powers of 10. Pattern A. 3.5 divided by 1 equals 3.5. 3.5 divided by 10 equals 0 0.35. 3.5 divided by 100 equals 0 0.035. 3.5 divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.0035. We know that 10 to the 0 power equals 1. Pattern B. 0 0.004 divided by 1 equals 0 0.004. 0 0.004 divided by 10 equals 0 0.0004 0 0.004 divided by 100 equals 0 0.0004 0 0.004 divided by 1000 equals 0 0.0004 0 0.004 divided by 10,000 equals Example 4. Calculate 3.71 multiplied by 100. Solution. 3.71 multiplied by 100 equals 307 to 1. 307 to 1 over 100 multiplied by 100 equals 37 to 1. Example 5. 0 0.5708 divided by 10 squared is equal to a, 0 0.000578, B, 0 0.005708, C, 0 0.05708, D, 57.08. Key, B. Summary. When we multiply by powers of 10, all digits move the given number of places determined by the powers of 10 to the right. For example, 6.54 multiplied by 10 squared is equal to 654. When we multiply by powers of 10, all digits move the given number of places determined by the powers of 10 to the left. For example, 6.54 divided by 10 squared is equal to 0 0.0654. Problems for today. Page 6, exercise 2A. Questions 6, 8, 10, 12, 24, and 26. Page 7, exercise 2B. Questions 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Solution for the problems given in the last lesson continues. Page 4, exercise 1D. Questions 2. 6, 7 to the base 8 multiplied by 5 to the base 8 is equal to 4, 2, 3 to the base 8. 6, 2, 7, 1 to the base 8 multiplied by 5 to the base 8 
equals 1635 to the base 8. 8. 1437 to the base 8 multiplied by 6 to the base 8 equals 11272 to the base 8. Solution for the problems given in the last lesson continues. Page 4, exercise 1D. 12. 1371 multiplied by 42. 57440. 2762. 62422 base 8. So we, when we came in, we looked at how we can form the equivalent fractions. Then we looked at the role zero plays. Then we moved on to addition and subtraction. Did you have fun there? Yes. So can you go back to your classroom and master that concept? Yes. Good. And when you looked at multiplication and division by powers of 10, did you realize it, it was, was that, that simple? simple? Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's good. You all are brilliant students. <laughs> brilliant students. And I hope that when you leave here, you're going to make full use of what you learned. <laughs>